All right, what's going on, guys? John Schaefer with you. It is the wrap-up show on this Wednesday evening. A lot to talk about. The Aztecs winning last night over Wyoming and a little bit of a, a wild game. And then you've got games going on right now in the Mountain West that are going to go final at some point while we're live. And, uh, you know, every single game night in the Mountain West has brought a level of intrigue. It really has. And we'll get into it over the course of the next 45 minutes or so. So as you make your way in, whether you're here live or on replay, really do appreciate your support of the channel. Got this thing off the ground in the summer. I've been talking Aztecs basketball and football with San Diegans, with supporters of San Diego State, with Mountain West football and basketball fans. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, maybe you're new here, whether you're here live or on replay, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I really do appreciate that. You can follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer. If you wouldn't mind smashing the like button, I'd appreciate that as well. You become a member of the channel. A handful of you have already done that since I launched that maybe a couple of weeks ago. You'll get emojis and badges couple of other things as well um, some exclusive content for you as well if you want to become a member you can click the join button down below also if you want to support the channel you can click the uh, super chat button down below click the dollar sign below the chat box i'll get to every single super chat here tonight and get your comments in as well i'll get to as many comments as i can here tonight aztecs really rolled in the second half i would say against wyoming the other night it was a it was a bizarre game at least for the first 20 minutes you kind of you had a, a feeling it could play out like that because Wyoming under Jeff Linder seems to throw curveballs at opponents, especially when they're to some extent, yeah, outmatch might not be the right word, but when they can't match the physicality and size, for example, of Jaden Ledee, they have to get creative. And to their credit, I think it was effective in the first half yesterday. They have really kind of baited or dared SDSU to shoot from beyond the arc. They left some players unguarded and early on the Aztecs made them pay. And then all of a sudden it became a little bit of a mental hurdle and the Aztecs were struggling from outside. They trailed 32-27. They scored the last seven points of the first half, though. SDSU, Darion Tremel at the buzzer again in the first half. That's happened five times. I talked to him after the game about that. Um, and that's just incredible. You know late in the first half, by the way, if they have the ball, final possession, it's going to Darion Tremel right now. Uh, but they took just a two-point lead into the half. And then early on in the second half, I think Wyoming on three consecutive possessions hit threes and took a five-point lead, a four- or five-point lead with about 18 or so minutes to play in the second half. And that's when the Aztecs just completely took over the game. They said, forget about what we were doing in the first half. Let's pound the ball. Let's get the ball 15 feet and in. They were 14 of 16 from inside the arc in the second half. Isn't that amazing? They were uh, unbelievable inside the arc. Yesterday, they got Jaden involved. Lamont was able to get to the basket. I thought Darion was absolutely terrific yesterday. So they got a number of players involved. Elijah in the game hit three threes, so that, which I think is encouraging as well for SDSU. So... What I like is the Aztecs took an unconventional punch on two days rest in this wild league where you're getting the best test or the best punch from everyone that you're playing because you're San Diego State. You're coming off a national championship game run. You've had so much success in this league over the 25-year history of the Mountain West Conference. And the Aztecs have been up to the challenge, to be completely fair and frank, when you look at where they are, 16-4 and four overall. Five and two in the Mountain West. Now, there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of very challenging games, opponents, road trips, venues um, ahead. You could argue what's ahead is more difficult than what they've played to this point, even in the league. But it's hard to ask for more than what they've done. I mean, they're 16 and four. And we'll get into the resume and the metrics and the Mountain West and the regular season standings and what's going on right now in the league. By the way, Nevada has beaten Colorado State today in Reno. It was a must have for Nevada to remain either on the right side of the bubble or close to the right side of the bubble. Colorado State, ranked 24th in the nation coming in, could afford a loss like this. Um, but night in and night out, we're seeing this with regularity. It's hard to win on the road. San Diego State can attest to that. With the losses in Boise and New Mexico, the Aztecs do have a San Jose State win. But it's hard to win against those top six or seven teams on the road. And tonight, Colorado State found that out. Aztecs, by the way, in the midst of this week-long by period, so to speak. I mean, they played yesterday. They'll play again next Tuesday at Colorado State. Colorado State played tonight, so a day later than San Diego State, and plays again the border war this weekend in Laramie. So they are in a very tricky window of time where they go Nevada loss, Wyoming. We know what they're capable of, especially at home where they're seven and one. And then they'll get SDSU next Tuesday night in Fort Collins. So they're all big for San Diego State. Everyone is up for the Aztecs, whether it's home or road. And uh, Tuesday night is a very big game. But again, I mean, I, I think when you're when you look at it like the 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 big picture, right, of what San Diego State has accomplished, they have four losses. They're all quad one road losses. That's it. It's one of the cleanest resumes in the country. I've been saying that for a long period of time. Maybe outside of like 
the top two or three teams. You look at like a Connecticut or Purdue. But even a Connecticut or Purdue, I'd have to look. One of those teams may have a quad two loss. San Diego State has not taken a quad two loss to this point. It doesn't mean that they won't. It's still a possibility. And they'll be challenged, obviously, coming up Tuesday night for Collins. That's a quad one game. Um, and then still what's to come at home. I mean, five regular season home games remaining against some of the premier teams in the league. Boise State is still coming here. New Mexico, a chance of payback. Boise State, a chance of payback. Aztec still got to go to Logan. Utah State is coming to um, – to San Diego State as well. So there, there's a lot of variables here, and nobody has clinched to anything. And there's, you know, the hay is not in the barn for anyone in the league. Um, the hay is not in the barn for very few teams, even in the country, when it comes to like locking themselves into the NCAA tournament. Yeah. I mean, again, the, the top three or four teams in the nation we know are going to the NCAA tournament. And even beyond that, I mean, there's, there's 10, 15, 20 teams that you'd feel really, really good about. And where San Diego State is right now, you'd feel really, really good about where the Aztecs are right now. We can get into some of that coming up, the metrics, Ken Palm, net rankings, bracketology. But there's there's work to be done. And, you know, the goals at San Diego State, as everyone here watching knows, are not just to, you know, be competitive and put yourself in a position to get to the NCAA tournament. They want to hang banners. I mean, they really have a strong tradition of that. Nobody has come close in the Mountain West. I think the Aztecs have doubled up any other school in Mountain West history in terms of regular season or postseason Mountain West championships. 16, I think I have that right. No other program has more than eight. So, you know, the Aztecs a year ago pulled the double off. They won the regular season. They won the Mountain West Tournament Championship. Of course, they'd love to do it again. Um, if if not, they'd love to at least get one of them, whether it's a regular season or, of course, that tournament championship, which guarantees you um, an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. But also, when, when you say that, of course, the banners matter. There's no question about it. I would never argue it at all. But what also matters is putting yourself in a position where you can secure a seed that gives you a chance to win in the NCAA tournament. Now, they normally would go hand in hand, right? You would say, well, winning the regular season gives me the best chance to secure a really good seed or winning the Mountain West tournament gives me the best chance to get into the NCAA tournament because there's an automatic bid. But um, all you can really ask for, I think, for SDSU right now is continue to do what they've done, right? And you could argue some of them, you know, the way they've gone about it and there's ebbs and flows of the season and there's highs and lows and some nights certain things look better than others and right. Some nights you're riding Jaden Ledee and other nights it's Lamont Butler and one night it's Reese Waters, and they've dealt with injuries here this year. But at the end of the day, they're 16 and four, and they're five and two in the Mountain West. And the Mountain West is the premier non power league in the country, and will get more NCAA tournament teams, um, more teams to the NCAA tournament than likely other Power Five leagues. Potentially the ACC may not get five, and the Pac 12 is not getting five teams into the NCAA tournament. Again, the Mountain West hasn't guaranteed that, but they are pacing to get potentially five teams into the tournament. They could get six with the right breakdown with these top six schools, SDSU, Utah State, Nevada, right? New Mexico, uh, I'm missing. Colorado State, who am I missing? Utah State, you know the six. With the right breakdown of results, there is absolutely a scenario where the Mountain West could get six. What's more likely is five. And I would think at this point, and it's only January 24th and things could change, and I guess multiple teams could slip off, but I would be utterly shocked if – the Mountain West didn't receive at least four bids to the NCAA tournament. That to me would be shocking. And it would be a third consecutive year, by the way, of four more teams in. And I think at this point, I'd be surprised if they didn't get five. And maybe maybe that's a little bit too far on January 24th. Maybe I should reserve judgment on that. It just feels like, again, from a metric perspective, from a win-loss perspective, uh, non-conference resumes, what teams are doing in the league it feels like there's a really good chance for this league to get five teams. Um, and you look at, at, again, what's going on around the nation. The ACC hasn't necessarily taken advantage. The Pac-12 certainly has not taken advantage. You've got a couple of really good leagues, Big 12, Big 10. Uh, SEC is going to get a number of teams into the NCAA tournament. And then there's the Mountain West. I think the Mountain West really is right there. But, you know, last night what you like is first time all season, Darion Trammell and Lamont Butler are both in double figures. That really surprised me. Um, that really did surprise me, and we know what they're capable of. They are big-time players that have had big-time moments in big-time games, and that's who they are. They're winners, and they're competitors, and they're veterans, and they kind of toyed last night with Wyoming, 35 combined points. I think on 15 of 19 or 15 of 20 shooting, which is really impressive. And then Jaden Ledea, you know, again, to Wyoming's credit, I thought they took Ledea out of the game in the first half because they basically tempted the Aztecs to take open shots, which then prevented San Diego State 
uh, from working to its strengths, which was to feed Jaden Ledee. In the first half, I think he had five points, two of seven shooting. And then he really was able to take over at times in the second half. He had 17 overall points, 12 points in the second half. I think he had four or five field goals in the second half. 17.7 rebounds or 17 points, eight rebounds for Ledee. And today, by the way, congratulations to Jaden. He was named by The Athletic as a midseason first-team All-American. So that's a credit, by the way, to The Athletic, to understanding how good the quality of play has been in the Mountain West Conference. Not just Ladee, by the way. Um, in terms of really quality bigs in the league, there's a lot of them, whether it's Dagenhart, Toppin, and not just bigs. I mean, look at the guard play. Guys like Isaiah Stevens, and we always know about Butler, and Tremel and Blackshear, and Lucas, and... Uh, even great, uh, what's his name? The Utah State, you know, forward who's having that huge year right now. Um, so there's a lot of really good players in this league, and I credit the Athletic for recognizing that Jaden Ladee is as good as any good player in this league. And you look at who's on this first team All America list. There's five players, and Zach Eady's on that list, and Kyle Filipowski at Duke is on that list, and so is Jaden Ladee on the midseason All America team. Again, what, what does it mean at the end of the day? Well, it's a it's a midseason team, uh, but he is trending for an appearance potentially on an AP All-America team. I think we saw Malachi Flynn do that in 2020. He was second team All-America. We could see Jaden as, as either a first team or second team All-American potentially here in 2024. So nobody's had an answer for Jaden. There's been a lot of hard doubles. There have been triples. They've tried to take him out of games. Everyone's game plan is to slow down Jaden. And, you know, I thought SDSU did a good job yesterday with Wyoming trying to slow down Jaden of still – finding a way to get others involved, whether it was Lamont or Darion, Elijah with the threes, um, Reese Waters really um, doing what he does, which is just finding his way on offense. I think he only had six or seven field goal attempts yesterday. Maybe he was three for six yesterday with six points. But again, you know, everyone is game planning for Ladee. Everyone is prepared and up to play San Diego State. And the Aztecs have answered the bell by and large here this year. Um, would you have liked to add another, you know, win, on the road, potentially, yeah, absolutely. You know, you'd like to be twenty zero. I'm sure Brian Dutcher and his players and his staff would tell you that. But you need to be realistic, and they put themselves in a position with four minutes to play. They could have won at BYU um, with seconds to play. You know, the game was still in the balance at Boise State. Uh, New Mexico did not go the way that anyone hoped it would, including the officiating. But it wasn't an officiating issue. Like it's not like they lost solely because of officiating. You know, Grand Canyon. Give Grand Canyon credit again in that environment to find a way um, to beat SDSU. But 16-4 with the bye week, it comes at the right time. It, it just does. It feels like they've been playing on short rest just continually, and it just the games just keep coming. Two days rest, travel. They've had um, you know issues at times with travel, and they've been connecting, and um, it just comes at the right time because you got Reese who's been battling an ankle. You have Miles who's been battling a toe and a hip. You have Darion, who has not been 100% healthy because of just sickness, and he missed a game last week against Nevada. You had Jaden earlier this year who had the elbow. Um, who, who else am I missing? Right, But guys have been you know, nicked up is the point. And in hearing from Brian Dutcher last night on the wrap-up show on the radio and then in hearing more from Dutch today with Darren Smith on San Diego Sports 760, you know, they feel as if this is the right time and they, they can work on themselves. And he made a, a really interesting point, which is where San Diego State typically has gotten better is when they have a chance to work on themselves. They get that seven or eight day break and they get one or two practice days where they're not worrying about an opponent. They're almost scouting themselves and they're trying to improve in areas they feel as if they need to do that. So they have the time to do that right now. Today was an off day for the team. I think they'll practice maybe each of the next two days or you know, something like that, and they'll work on themselves. And then they'll get into the weekend, and over the weekend, you know, they'll, they'll game plan for Colorado State and travel out there Monday and play Tuesday. But it's coming at the right time. It's the first of two buys, by the way. I think they're spaced pretty effectively, so to speak, because you have one now, and you have one about a month from now, still with about uh, two weeks until the NCAA tournament, about a week, week and a half in front of the Mountain West tournament. So this now begins, I don't know if it begins the stretch run, but it begins certainly the run before the stretch run. And this is a critical period of time right now from post buy until the next buy, which is going to be like, again, the 1st of March. And you're playing all these quad one games. Um, I said, I think the other day, maybe on the wrap up show or potentially on, on John and Jim on San Diego Sports 760, just to put it in perspective, I heard last weekend, I think Texas has the most quad one games in the nation remaining. This was last weekend. They've since played one, if not two. They had 11. At that moment, San Diego State had seven 
quad one opportunities, which tells you that the Mountain West is a really good competitive league with a lot of opportunities. Um, so I think still the Aztecs have six quad one opportunities and maybe three remaining games outside of quad one or quad two. That would be at Fresno State, at Air Force. And those are scary. Fresno State nearly beat Boise State last night. They, they were dead to rights, outscored them 21-3, had Boise beaten and lost. And then Air Force won at UNLV yesterday by 32, and that's a whole other conversation. But the Aztecs still have to go to those two venues, and then they get San Jose State at home. So those are the games. It's so funny how college basketball works. Those are the games San Diego State can really ill afford to lose. The games against the New Mexicos and the Boise, even though all the fans want to see the Aztecs, you know, uh, exact revenge, right, or avenge earlier season losses. The truth is those are the games that are not going to hurt you if you lose them. Now, they hurt you from a regular season standings perspective. And again, if you're trying to win a regular season title, you're not trying to lose to New Mexico at home because then you don't have the tiebreaker and they're 2-0 and against you. Same thing with Boise State. But the the real, you know, quote-unquote landmines, and there aren't a lot of them, are those quad three and quad four games that San Diego State under Brian Dutcher – finds ways to win, just routinely finds ways to win. And there have been close games, San Jose State this year, up in Northern California, really good game. They came down to the wire, Jay Powell, with that huge play to preserve the win for SDSU. And, and we'll see how they navigate those you know, two or three remaining landmines. I think really two of them are what you deem a challenge or a you know something that you at least scratch your head over. That's the road games, Fresno State and Air Force, Air Force specifically at elevation and the Princeton-style offense. And knowing what they're capable of after you see what happened yesterday in Vegas. And then San Jose State at home, you just take your chances because it's VA House Arena and you just have to find a way to win at home, which is, which is what the Aztecs do routinely. But again, if you can navigate your way through those three, then you're going to be pretty well protected from a metrics perspective. Like you don't take on water losing two teams ranked inside the top 45 in the net. If you lose a game, you lose a spot. If you win a game, you gain a spot. But you're not dropping back. 12 spots by losing to New Mexico. You're not dropping back 14 spots by losing to Boise State, where you are dropping 12, 14, 16 spots is if you lose one of those three games that I referenced just a moment ago. But, you know, all things being equal, I think a lot of Aztec fans would take this. I mean, the expectations were so absurdly high. You're coming off a year in which you went to a national championship game. You add in the portal. You have a lot back, including one of the great players in the history of the program in Lamont Butler, when you think about what he has meant to the program and the shot, one of the most iconic moments in the history of San Diego sports. So you're coming in and everyone's expecting the moon, and which is reasonable. The San Diego State a year ago was in the national championship game. So you're expecting the moon. And the truth is they've kind of answered the bell at all turns, right? They, they just have. I mean, they've been up to the task this year. They have not been perfect. But what team really has? I don't even think there is. There's no undefeated team, right, left in the nation right now. And they challenge themselves. Gonzaga, BYU, Grand Canyon, right? Three Pac-12 opponents. Neutral site game. St. Mary's, who has really turned it on. I think the Aztecs' strength of schedule and strength of record is right there, right? Top 15. I mean, you look at the metrics across the board, and they just keep getting better for SDSU. It's you know, top 15 in categories, top 20. They're basically top 20, top 21, top 22 in most all categories, which positions you to not just make the NCAA tournament, but be seated well and have a chance to win games in that tournament and even potentially be protected. And what I mean by that is top four seeds in the NCAA tournament are quote unquote protected, which means you get the ge geographic advantage theoretically, or you should have an advantage geographically, like as opposed to being sent out east, like to Orlando, where the Aztecs were last year. And by the way, it worked out pretty well. Um, maybe you end up in Spokane, um, which then maybe routes you through Los Angeles if you get to a Sweet 16, for example, this year. Now, again, that's not the end all be all. Look at last year Orlando, Louisville, Houston. That's not exactly the ideal geographic path for SDSU. I would prefer matchup to geography any day of the week. Any day of the week. I'd rather play the right opponent in Pittsburgh than the wrong opponent in Spokane, the right opponent in Louisville than the wrong opponent in the sweet 16 in Los Angeles. I, I I'd rather benefit from the matchup than from the geography, but all of it of course matters. And we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Four seeds and five seeds and six seeds. There's so much to, to still play out here in the uh, weeks ahead. Um, but it's fun to have that conversation because the Aztecs have put themselves in a position where we should be having that conversation because they've taken care of business. And that's the overall point. Um, okay. My name is John Schaefer. This is the wrap-up show presented by my friend Eric Lanier over at Higher Impact Financial. If you are new here, 
if you would not mind uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, I really would appreciate that. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, this has been around for maybe six months at this point, and I've been trying to do as many videos as possible with regularity. The more interest there is, the more viewers there are, the more subscribers, the more likes, the more I'm going to be able to provide to you from a content perspective. So I really do appreciate those that have subscribed, those that have told others about this channel. So if you're here live or on replay, please subscribe. Please smash the like button for me. Please follow me on Twitter. I got so much Aztec content for you on Twitter, Instagram as well. I think I'm at John Schaefer on Instagram if someone wants to look. J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R on Twitter as well, at John Schaefer. Um, and again, appreciate the memberships. Click the join button down below. You'll get emojis and badges. Appreciate the super chats and the super thanks if you're here on replay. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to those here tonight. I'll, get, I'll try to get to as many comments as I can in a moment as well. And while we have a moment, I do want to remind you, I, I mentioned this is made possible by my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. I actually have set up a call next week with Eric to go over my family's financial planning needs. So I can't wait to do that. If you do not have a financial plan, it's simple. Click the link in the description down below. Eric is a huge Aztec supporter. He's a San Diegan. He's the founder of Higher Impact Financial. If you don't have a financial plan, he can hook you up. And you can get in contact with him, set up a free 15-minute call with Eric just by clicking the link in the description down below. I can't wait to do it next week. I'll let you know how that works out. But Eric's been a longtime supporter of my work, whether it's Aztecs-related or Padres-related. He solves problems for people to meet with him. He's found too many people do not have a financial plan. And if they do, by the way, it's outdated. Uh, the second problem is that a lot of people just don't have clear, defined financial goals. So simple as this. The link for Eric's website is below. If you're ready to get better results with your wealth, who isn't, by the way, then you've got to set up a 15-minute call with Eric. Eric's firm is different than anything you've experienced from a financial advisor before. Click that link in the description down below. Let Eric take care of yourself, your spouse, your family, your loved ones. Again, if you're looking for a financial planner, get in contact with my buddy, Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. All right, let me get to some of the comments that have rolled in here today. And again, if you're watching this live or on replay, um, do appreciate the comments. So let's get to a few here, like this one that rolled in earlier from Paul. Paul, I appreciate it. He says, the boys are back in town. Way to keep that home streak going. Now go steal one on the road to Colorado State. Go Aztecs. That's the key here. I think the, the Mountain West regular season champion will have beaten one or two, if not more, of the top six on the road right? Boise State has won at Nevada. Um, UNLV has won at Boise State, although UNLV just lost to Air Force. They will not factor into the regular season title race this year. But but again, Boise State having picked up a road win at Nevada, now they lost at home to UNLV. That's the point, though. If a team can get one or two against the top five or six, then they are likely to be the regular season champion. That's how I look at it. You try to hold serve at home, if the Aztecs, who have already lost to New Mexico and Boise, but they didn't need to go perfect in those games. If they can somehow win in Reno and Fort Collins, they may have a leg up for that regular season title. So, again, a lot of basketball to be played. A lot of this will play out over the course of a period of weeks. But San Diego State typically will find a marquee road win or two in the league, and that's how they win regular season championships. And they still have opportunities. Reno, Logan, Fort Collins – Vegas. So there's still opportunities ahead of them. Sarah, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your membership, Sarah. Really do appreciate that. Um, very much do. And she said earlier, and this game's gone final, looks like Nevada's going to beat Colorado State. That's a significant win for Nevada. And I'm going to pull up the Mountain West standings right now. In fact, I probably could do it on the screen. Um, although I have to figure out how to do that. Let me see if I can pull it up. It'll probably be a little small but I'll do it anyway. So let me pull this up real quick on the screen. And uh, here we go. So the Mountain West standings right now, let me refresh because I don't know if these are updated. Here we go. So you got Utah State and Boise State at five and one. Boise State surviving Fresno State last night. Um, blew a huge lead, but found a way late. Aztecs five and two, so a half game out. New Mexico four and two in action right now against San Jose State. Let me get an update on that score. I'm sure some of you are watching it right now. Um, the updated score is uh, that game's gone final. So New Mexico has beaten San Jose State 95 75. So that game just went final. JT Toppin, that freshman, he's been a monster 14 points, 10 rebounds, four blocks. That is a big win in terms of margin. I would not have expected that a 20 point margin. New Mexico's playing really well. 
They're 17 and three. So with that New Mexico win, is this updated, folks? The New Mexico win at four and two? Um, I'm not sure if it is or not, but New Mexico, again, only two conference losses like SDSU. Wyoming's three and three. I mean, they're kind of in the thick of it. Nevada with the win gets to three and three. Colorado State with the loss is now three and three. You've got a top 25 team, at least heading into the week, that's three and three in the Mountain West. Then I think from that point on, none of these teams are going to be in title contention. UNLV maybe had a chance when they were two and three with some good wins, but the loss to Air Force, they'll, they'll have no way to make up for that, you wouldn't think. Um, San Jose State, you know, has been close in a lot of games, not today. And then Air Force, a big win over UNLV yesterday. Fresno State really gave away a home opportunity, I would say, against Boise State. Okay, then now we have the update. So San Diego State and New Mexico are both five and two. Um, San Jose State falls back to one and five. So you've got that clear line of like delineation between the top and the bottom, in my opinion. You've got seven and you've got four. Right, you have Utah State, Nevada, and Colorado State. You can lump Wyoming in a little bit for what they've done so far in the league, and they're a tough out at home. But then UNLV, Fresno State, San Jose State, Air Force. I think we'd all be surprised if they contended for a league title in the regular season. They basically have to completely turn around their seasons and win like nine straight in order to do that. So you've got seven teams with a realistic opportunity, I would say, for a regular season conference title. Although I would think it would be challenging for Wyoming when they go on the road to really vie. So again, the six teams we've talked about, Aggies, Broncos, Lobos, Aztecs, uh, Nevada, and Colorado State. Those are the six, te six teams, and those are the updated standings. Um, okay, let's see. Maria, what's going on? Good to have you in the chat here tonight. She says, good evening, John, and hi, everyone. Go Aztecs. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, T Fuel, what's going on? Watching from the Central Valley in Bakersfield. Appreciate that. Kirsten, thank you for hanging out, saying no days off. By the way, let, let me know where you're watching from here tonight. Um, whether you're here live or on replay, do a pre on what's going on. Uh, let's see here. Dustin says he's afraid that the Cowboys first half may be a blueprint for other teams need to get the shooting going. Love the shows, John. Thank you, Dustin. Really do appreciate that. I don't see it as a blueprint and here's why Jeff Linder is a very good head coach. Who's always been unconventional and some of the methodology deployed, probably not the best term I could have used is something that you don't typically see across college basketball. Like, Unguarding players on the perimeter is not something you'd routinely see from anyone. Like you may see it strategically here or there. Wyoming has routinely done it against San Diego State. Or I'll go back to was Linder there when the Aztecs were 30 and 2? I think he was. And remember, in like an opening round game of the Mountain West tournament, Wyoming won a game by scoring like 100 points and playing at a ridiculous tempo. They then literally took the air out of the ball against SDSU and it nearly worked. They held the ball for 30 seconds every single time down. And they ended up losing that game 69-66. So they do everything in their power. They'll deploy different zones. They've played 1-3-1 one, one against SCSU before. I think they understand that position by position, they're going to be overmatched. They don't have the same depth as the Aztecs. And they're trying to do things that get the Aztecs out of their game. Where I don't think other teams are as willing to do that. I don't think that Boise State or New Mexico or Utah State are going to change who they are when they play San Diego State, where I think Wyoming has been willing to do that. And while it hasn't really worked, it's quasi-worked, if that makes sense. Linder's never beaten SDSU. I think he's 0-7. And Dutch has won 11 straight against Wyoming. So whatever Wyoming has done, you know, again, has had a level of effectiveness. But at the end of the day, SDSU is winning these games. So at the end of the day, I don't know if anyone else is going to try to implement a strategy when Wyoming hasn't been able to beat SDSU. Uh, let's see here. Kirsten saying Heidi can be special. Yeah. I mean, true freshman bigs, you don't see a lot of them across college basketball. You're seeing a really good one, obviously at New Mexico and JT Toppin. I think Heidi has improved, uh, from the start of the year until right now, obviously he's going up against one of the best bigs in the nation in Jane Ladia practice. Can you imagine if you were, um, miles Heidi getting to college and getting to San Diego state and seeing Jane Ladie and having to face off against that all summer and fall long? I mean, I'd probably want to you know, quit basketball at that point, but he's got a really bright future. I agree with you. He really does. Um, he's had some impactful moments for the Aztecs this year. Um, he's had some buckets here recently and in the last couple of games for the Aztecs as well, um, but he's got a bright future. There's no question about that. Gary, what's going on, man? Good to have you here. Uh, Gary, loyal Aztec fan. Aztec Gary says, hi, John. I didn't have a chance to text you after the game, and I have quite a few comments. All right, Gary, let's get to a couple of them. He says, I think that the turning point in the game was in the second half was when Miles Bird guarded Sam Griffin. 
Well, I think the turning point in the game, it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned that, Gary, because I haven't really touched on it. The turning point in the game for me in general was San Diego State's second half defense because Wyoming shot over 50% in the first half and they shot 35.5% in the second half, I think 11 of 31, and they were three of three. So after they started three of three, all of them from distance, they were then eight of 28, which is, what is that, 8, 16, 24 is 33%. I mean, they were in the neighborhood of 29%, somewhere in there. After starting the second half three of three, the final 18 minutes of the half, they shot 29%. You're going to win a lot of games with that. So I thought that was really the difference. And also the Aztecs' unwillingness to play Wyoming's game at SDSU's offensive end. They could have settled for threes in the second half, but after they weren't having success from the outside in the first half, they decided to get the ball inside, Jaden or drive, Darion, Lamont, right, et cetera. And it, wait, and it worked because the Aztecs were 14 of 16 from inside the arc in the second half. He goes on to say it looked like Griffin was very uncomfortable being guarded by an athletic, taller guard. That's interesting you say that, Gary. I mean, yeah, I, I'd have to go back and watch. That's interesting. I mean, Miles has really come a long way himself for SDSU. You hope he can maintain some level of health in the second half of the year because it's been one thing after the after another, and we've seen his progression and ascent and climb in his second college season, but it's kind of his first. He played like, what, two, three games a year ago so they got to keep him healthy because he's he's really paying dividends mm -hmm. right now but that's a really interesting point mm -hmm. um and then gary says oh, don't get me wrong i love dt and philly did a great job on defense but it looked like miles really knocked griffin off his game for the rest of the game i'll go back and, and check that out gary that's a really interesting observation because i don't remember how often miles played like how many minutes miles logged in the second half it, it wasn't a ton was it because dt was really rolling on offense, I think finished maybe at 27, 28, 29 minutes. I think Lamont played 30 minutes. So I don't know how many minutes Miles played. Obviously, he was he was sent to the bench in the first half because he aggravated his hip. And then he did um, return in the second half. I'd have to look at how many minutes he played. In my mind, it wasn't more than seven, eight, was it? Was it more than seven or eight minutes in the second half? And if it was, I just I apologize because you know how it is. When you do this every single day and you watch all these games, <laughs> sometimes this can, uh, you know, I confuse myself, to be honest. Uh, let's see here, Mikey. Thank you. Mikey says the Wyoming game proved we can win multiple ways. Man us and we'll feed Ladie in the paint all night. Zone us in our guard play. Can isolate and make shots. Yeah, I think one of the mistakes, I mean, mistake maybe is a strong word, but one of the things that Wyoming maybe didn't fully game plan for this possibility was, you know, it didn't feel as if they were really pressuring the ball when Lamont Butler had it as much as other teams have. And Butler just took advantage. Like he just, he went to the rim and he was able to get there, not fully uncontested or fully untouched, but he had success getting to the rim time and time again. And, you know, we know he's got a quick first step, one of the quickest first steps in the nation. And he really can get downhill on someone quick. And he took advantage of the Cowboys yesterday. He's had two 20 point games in his career. They're both against Wyoming. The game a year ago where they didn't guard him, and he hit five threes. They just said, we're going to play the percentages, which is what they did yesterday. And Lamont was a really good three-point shooter a year ago. He's emerging now here this year as well. He had five threes in that game. They didn't guard Keisha Johnson from beyond the arc either in that game. And I think he hit two. Um, and then, of course, yesterday, they did the same thing with the four. They didn't guard Pal. They didn't guard um, Saunders outside. And that combination actually did hit three threes in the game. Now, they took a lot of attempts combined, Pal and Saunders maybe – I think Saunders 3 of 8 from beyond the arc, and Powell was 0 for 3 from beyond the arc in the game. But um, again, you're playing an analytical or metric game. You're playing percentages, and sometimes it works, and sometimes over the course of 40 minutes, it really doesn't. But, Mikey, your, po your point's valid. I, I think SDSU, again, offensively, we've had this conversation a lot, is improved from where they were a year ago, and they were in the national championship game a year ago. Can't do the direct correlation. I always have to preface this. Doesn't mean the Aztecs are going to end up in the national championship game. It's a one and done NCAA tournament. It's all about matchups, right? It's all about moments. Things can happen. With that being said, the numbers do support them being better. Um, they haven't shot the ball well from beyond the arc, as we know, especially here recently. I expect it to change. I think with the time off, I think with getting guys healthy, I didn't mention Micah, who's been battling a calf. He's had that taped for the last couple of weeks. I think guys like Micah and Reese, and Lamont, and DT, and Jaden, who's shooting like 39% from beyond the arc. And, and Jay Powell has shot it pretty well at times from beyond the arc. And Elijah at times has shot it pretty well from beyond the arc. They're going to shoot it better than they have. That, that's I honestly feel that way. They're shooting 31% as a team from beyond the arc. I think they shot 34% a year ago as a team. The number's going up. 
I don't know how much higher it's going to go up. They're not going to shoot 31% from three from here on out in the final 11 games of the regular season. I think the number goes up. I really feel that way. They have too many good shooters. I think as they get healthier, we'll see that play out. They're going to have games, multiple games, where they shoot 40% or better from beyond the arc. It's just the law of averages. I mean, they've had games where they've shot 19%, 21%. They are due for a game. They shoot 39%, 41% from beyond the arc. So I really trust that that is coming, and I feel like they're fully capable. Like It's not a mirage that Micah Parrish has been a good three-point shooter, or Reese Waters has been a good three-point shooter, or DT has been a good three-point. Like These guys have for their careers, shot it well. And I would expect that to hopefully transpire at some point here in the second half of the season. Regular James, thank you again. He says it was nice to see Butler get to the rock the final 14 minutes of the game. Yeah, I mean, he was able to get to the basket routinely yesterday. He was in full control. The point guards, five assists, no turnovers, 35 combined points. Aztecs, their fewest turnovers in the Division One game ever, I believe. Homer Road, two. And their first turnover came with 14-0-1 to play in the game. And I think they were plus 11 in turnovers at the time. I think it was 11 nothing. The Essex outscored Wyoming yesterday off turnovers, 19 nothing. It was literally the difference in the game. Um, Gustavo, thank you, my friend. He says, hello, John. What do you think about Saunders taking a lot of threes and not shooting, developing his under-the-basket post scoring? Go Aztecs from Tijuana. Gustavo, I appreciate you watching. It's good to have uh, viewers and supporters from um, south of the border here tonight as well. Saunders, remember the first five, six games of the year, he was like a 40% three-point shooter. I think the Aztecs don't win one or two of those games. Maybe it's Washington in San Juan Capistrano or, or Cal in San Juan Capistrano or Washington in Vegas on that neutral floor. One or two of those games, the Aztecs aren't winning without Elijah Saunders. You know, a lot like Miles, he doesn't have a lot of college seasoning. He played sparingly a year ago. You had a veteran front court with Nathan and A.G. and Jaden Ledea. You had Jaden Ledea and Aguilka Rope coming off your bench. That's all you need to know about Elijah Saunders' role last year. So, you know, I think considering all of that, there's been a lot of progression in his game. I think we saw him try to get to the basket a bit yesterday as well, use some of that physicality. I think he's a good shooter. He hit three threes yesterday. Now, three for eight is not a bad clip. I mean, he shot 38% from beyond the arc yesterday. I think he's a capable three-point shooter. I think it's a big part of his game. And I think also, you know, scoring inside 15 feet is going to be a focal point for him both this year and moving forward as well. But, you know... I understand that some people don't want to see him just kind of living on that three-point line, but in the same respect, I feel like he's had some success living on that three-point line as well here in 2024. Oliver saying, I love seeing Lamont being more assertive and attacking the basket. Gustavo, I agree that Saunders needs to develop a post-game and mid-range game rather than just shooting the three balls. And by the way, it's probably all going to come. Handful of games last year, not a ton of minutes. True sophomore, just a second collegiate season. And we've seen the growth in these players over the years under Brian Dutcher and Steve Fisher, haven't we? There's been so much progression and growth. Look at Jaden. Look at a Jordan Shackle throughout his four years. Look at a Matt Mitchell throughout his tenure. Look at the way Lamont has grown his game. Right. I mean, this is without exception, by and large. The, the, the regulars on the team that are in the program for more than two years – take drastic steps forward. And I would expect that to be the case with Elijah as well, um, You know, assuming he's here in 2024-25. And I say that because we're in this transfer portal NIL era and just all the rules have changed. But SDSU has done a really nice job of retaining its roster in the first few years of this open portal. Um, and I think there's a reason why. They get guys to professional basketball. They win at a high level, right? We're in San Diego. It's an elite program. I mean, there's a zillion things to like about playing at San Diego State. I think there's only so many opportunities that are better than SDSU nationally. Now, does NIL play a role? We've talked about that. And I should always say, I like to say that you should support the collectives around San Diego State athletics, whether it's Aztec Link, which became an official NIL sponsor or um, I don't know, it's official NIL collective of San Diego State athletics. So congratulations to J.R. Tolver, his team over there at Aztec Link. Go to Aztec Link. Dot com for more information. And then there's the Mesa Foundation, which has done an incredible job with San Diego State men's and women's basketball. But if you are a supporter of the Aztecs, if you want to see them continue to have success or attain rosters in football, men's basketball, and other sports, you need to get to the Mesa Foundation. You need to get to Aztec Link. And if you have the means, and we're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars, if you've got tens of dollars that you can contribute monthly, it goes a long way. You get tens of people to donate tens of dollars and all of a sudden you're making an impact so i try to say that as often as possible there are great great people at aztec link and at the mesa foundation they're supporting san diego state student athletes 
Um, and those of you that are here are supportive of San Diego State. So if you have the means, I really would encourage you to go to Aztec Link or Mesa Foundation. Uh, Kevin, thank you. He says, John, how many quad one wins do we have? I think I saw that Boise had four. Fresno State made a great comeback last night versus Boise, and two late turnovers probably cost them the game. I think the Aztecs entering the day technically have two. I'm going to look it up right now. SDSU is two and four in quad one. They are four and zero in quad two, which means they're six and four in the first two quadrants. And then they're four and zero in quad three. They're four and zero in quad four. They still have, I believe, six quad one opportunities to come. So there's still a chance, even if they split the six to come, that would give them five quad one wins. There would be five and seven in that scenario. If they split the six remaining quad one opportunities, those 12 opportunities would be many more or much more than they had, I believe, a year ago. But yes, Boise State has four, but then again, they've been tripped up in quad two, and I think they even have a quad three loss this year. So it's all about how you parse through the data, if that makes sense. Like, uh, you know, you can spin statistics in a number of ways. I would tell you this, San Diego State, yes, you know, you'd prefer to be four and two as opposed to two and four in quad one, but even having a couple of quad one wins at this point in the season, I think is is they're in a good spot. But the thing is they've avoided any bad loss, which I think goes a long way. Of course, you want to combine good wins with no bad losses, which is what San Diego State by and large has been able to do this year. Um but yes, they're two and four right now in quad one. But again, that alone doesn't tell the full story because they're perfect in every other quadrant. Uh, Dustin, thank you. Yeah, New Mexico five and two now in the league with their victory tonight over San Jose State. I mean, I can't wait for the rematch games. Boise coming here, New Mexico coming here. Um, we'll see if the Aztecs can pull those games out. Uh, SDSU has not yet lost at Viejas this year. Hopefully they can keep that going through the final five remaining regular season home games. You know, last year, just one team got them at home. It was New Mexico and Jalen House. So th those games will be huge. I mean, I don't care what happens between now and then. Those games are going to be massive. Boise State Senior Night, which is in March on a Friday night, and New Mexico is coming up in uh, in February. So they'll both be huge, a a as well as the other games, by the way. It's not just those games. All these games are going to be big. Art, thank you. He says, hi, John. Do you think DeMarche deserves some more minutes over Heidi? Um, I like that we've seen DeMarche in each of the last two games, Art, to your point. I think that um, I think there's a reason, obviously, for it. Maybe it's based on what they're seeing right now from him in practice. Maybe it's his health because he was bothered by a shoulder earlier in the year as well. I think he's a very quality defender that has an offensive game to him as well. Had that alley-oop dunk yesterday. Uh, played a little bit, I think, just over a minute against Boise State. Had a couple of minutes there in the second half yesterday. I, I wouldn't say it that way, Art. I mean, I'm not a coach and I'm not a scout, so I'm not going to tell you I think DeMarche deserves minutes over Heidi. But I do think we may see here DeMarche and Heidi getting minutes in relief of Ladie, which maybe gives Ladie an extra two to four minutes a game, which maybe is the difference that he will need to be fully rested late in games, especially at elevation. Like if Jaden has been playing, and I'm making it up, you know, 35 minutes in the league, if you could, you know, maybe pull that back, pull the reins into 32 minutes, but he's fresh and rested for the final four or five minutes of the game. Maybe that's advantageous. Maybe the 31 minutes from Jaden is better than the 36 minutes because he's fully healthy and ready down the stretch in those games, especially at elevation. So that's why the continued development of players like Miles Heidi, Jay Powell, Demarche Johnson is so critically important because, you know, as great as Jaden is, I mean, you wish you could have him on the floor every second of every single game, but A, it's not realistic, and B, does it give him the best chance to be at 100% throughout the course of the game? And the guy never gets tired. It's incredible. It really is. He's got such a motor and has so much energy and is so impactful. So you never want to take him out of the game, but sometimes maybe, you know, less is more, so to speak, where, you know, as opposed to 40 minutes, he's playing 35, but those 35 minutes are more impactful than the 40 minutes if he doesn't catch a breather if that makes sense. Uh, regular James wants to know, uh, do you think we should press a little bit more after a made basket? I think San Diego State's been pressing a ton. Uh, they pressed for 40 minutes against San Jose State. They pressed a lot, I thought, against Boise State, and that was something that paid dividends. They pressed a ton yesterday against Wyoming. So not really, to be honest with you, because I think they've been doing it with regularity. You know, not every single possession, not havoc, right? Not whatever Arkansas was doing 30 years ago or you know what I mean. But, I mean, they, they've been pretty aggressive with their press and rotating in their guards and 
making teams go 90 plus feet and making teams work to cross over the timeline and taking 10 or 12 seconds off the shot clock before teams get into their sets. Gary says, uh, 10, 10 Aztecs played quality minutes. Heidi and Johnson played no more than five minutes, but they were in the middle of the game. Could be a key going forward. The Dutch has confidence in Johnson on defense. Yes, that, that furthers the point. That's a great point, Gary. Um, I think it's a key in a number of areas. I mean, you need them to be effective when they're on the floor, but you also need to give Jaden the blow that is necessary game to game and within the game to put you in a position where Jaden is playing his best basketball in the final handful of minutes of game, specifically mm -hmm. on the road. Uh, Gustav wants to know, do I think Johnson could develop in a similar style way like Keisha Johnson? I think they're different players. Um, and it's hard for me to comment really on the development of Demarche Johnson Jr. compared to Keisha because we haven't seen a lot of Demarche Johnson Jr. We just haven't. I don't know how many minutes he's played this year, but it's not a ton. I think we've seen some real bright spots. But by this point in Keyshot's career, because DeMarche is a redshirt sophomore, so this would be the third year for Keyshot Johnson. By that point, Keyshot's playing you know 20-something minutes a night by his third year. So it's really hard for me to make that type of comp because we just haven't seen DeMarche like we saw Keyshot his first couple of years. Uh, Gary saying Jaden's legs look tired the past couple of games. I agree that in-game rest could be helpful. And I think this week-long period could be helpful not just for Jaden, but for all players. I mean, Jaden is as impactful as any player in the country. That's tiring in itself, just saying that. He, he is Zach Eady in the Mountain West is what he's been. He's the third most effective player, third most efficient player in the country per, per Ken Palm. That's mm -hmm. incredible. You don't do that without a level of wear and tear in doing that. So they have to be cognizant of that as they are, and his minutes have come down since the first month of the season and in the conference, they've come down his minutes. So everyone I think is fully aware of it. And you know, you need him healthy down the stretch and you need him healthy down the stretch in games as well. And he's fully capable of being a guy that can single-handedly win games for you. And he's going to, uh, you know, he's going to have another game where he scores 30 points and grabs 13 rebounds. And he's going to have a game beyond that where he scores 27 points and grabs 12 rebounds, right? Because that's the player that he's been here this year. Uh, Kevin, what's going on, man? He says, the fact that the bye will give this team rest, but also an opportunity to work on themselves for strictly preparing for the opposition couldn't have come at a better time. Optimistic coming out of the bye. I agree with you, Kevin, because you think about it from a timing perspective. They played about a month, and then they had like the semester bye, so to speak, right? You got the finals week. And out of that, I thought they played some of their best basketball of the year. They go to Spokane. They played a complete game against Gonzaga. But they had like a... a two periods of like a week stretch where there was finals and then there was like Christmas. And when you work on yourself like that, routinely SDSU improves. And routinely as well, we know under Brian Dutcher, the teams really do improve February, March, like this time of year, heading into February. That's where you really see these teams like Crescendo um, have that higher ceiling. And I think we're going to have a chance to hopefully see that again. Now, Will we see it in the same way we've seen it previously in wins and losses? I don't know about that. And the reason I say that is because the league is so good that you don't automatically get rewarded for playing better, if that makes sense. You can play well and lose two good teams. And last year, San Diego State lost, what, seven games, including the national championship game. And prior to that, their previous loss was Boise State in Boise Senior Night, I think, in February. But all year, including the tournament, they took on both the Mountain West tournament and the NCAA tournament, they took on seven losses. Now, they already have four, and they got tough games still coming up. So they could very well lose more games than last year. But that doesn't mean they're worse off. So I think people need to be aware of that. It also doesn't mean they're going to be better seeded or worse seeded. That's a whole other conversation. But, you know, each season is unique into itself. And I don't think it's fair to compare any team to any other team. This is this team. This isn't the 2023 team. They don't have Nathan Mensa, right? They don't have Matt Bradley. It's a They don't have a Gwoka Rope. They don't have Adam Seiko. You understand. But what they do have is this iteration of this team. And they they have Jaden Ledee 2024, right? And the massive strides that he's taken. They have Reese Waters. They have Jay Powell. They have, you know, the additional development of these players that are still in the program, the Darions and the Lamonts and the Miles and the Elijahs. So, and they have added these freshmen as well. So th this is... You know, to be fair, it's just, in my opinion, it's not fair to do a comparison. Last year was special. 2020 was special. 2014 was special. 2011 was special. Um, and this team, I think to this point, has been pretty darn special. It doesn't mean they get to a national championship game. 
It doesn't mean they win a Mountain West Tournament Championship. We don't know what it means, but we're going to find out. But what we do know is the trend lines, I think, are encouraging. And, you know, it's not their fault they don't have Matt Bradley or Nathan Mensa. That was never going to happen. The guys run out of eligibility. Um, that's how college sports work. And you just kind of have to embrace what this team is. And sometimes I see comps and I'm like, you know, truthfully, if you're comparing this team to last year's team at this point, I think they're in a very similar spot. I don't, you know, last year's team had highs and lows. They didn't fully get it into gear until after Boise. Um, you know, they started to really improve in February. They had a team meeting or two. They blew the doors off Boise at home. Um, and then, of course, we know what they did in the Mountain West Tournament, and we know what they did in the NCAA Tournament. But seasons are long for a reason, and you don't have to play your best basketball November 10th. In fact, I'd prefer they play their best basketball you know, March 10th and, you know, April 3rd, <laughs> like they, like they were a year ago. Um, all right, guys. So yeah, just wanted to, you know, hang out here, talk about the Wyoming win, look at it from a big picture perspective, get everyone ready for Tuesday. I'm trying to think if, if there's anything else that's been going on that has been topical. Um, again, I mentioned Jane Ledee is the mid season first team all American is named by the athletic. Um, we talked about the Mountain West standings. Um, we talked about, Again, Aztec Link being named an official collective of San Diego State as well. So, you know, it's an exciting time. I think if you're an Aztec fan, these are really exciting times, um, especially coming off what happened last year, and we'll see what's to come. I mean, these next, you know, handful of weeks, the best time of year for college basketball fans. You get into February, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, you're, you're so close to Selection Sunday, and we're not that close. And I always – it's one of those things where I want to enjoy it. I don't like to fast-forward it, so to speak. I don't, I don't need it to be March 17th tomorrow, which is Selection Sunday. I want to enjoy the ride. So enjoy these next seven or eight weeks um, before Selection Sunday on March 17th, and hopefully, you know, San Diego State can keep playing like this where, um, you know, they got a chance to make another run here in march yeah thank you gary that's what i meant to say 40 minutes of hell nolan richardson arkansas and they won a national championship uh he played under haskins that's right at utah yeah thank you gary remember those teams back in the day uh when they were really rolling in arkansas all right again a reminder um please support our title sponsor here on the wrap-up show eric lanier at higher impact financial if you're looking for a financial planner if you want to set up a free 15-minute call with eric just click the link in the description down below. In addition to that, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, whether you're here live or on replay, I really would appreciate that. This is a brand new Aztec channel. This is for San Diegans. This is for Mountain West football and basketball fans. This is for fans of the Aztecs football and men's basketball program. So please subscribe. Please let people know about it. The more, the merrier. So I do appreciate that. Smash the like button for me. Follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer, Instagram as well. J-O-N. S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. And again, thank you for your memberships. You can click join down below. And thank you for the super thanks if you are here on replay as well. Aztecs over Wyoming on Tuesday at Viejas, 81-65. Big one looming with Colorado State, Isaiah Stevens, Nico Medved. Right now, a team in the top 25 of the AP poll. That'll be Tuesday in Fort Collins. All right, guys, enjoyed it. Thank you so much. We'll catch up again uh, over the weekend or next week. Thanks again. And join me on the radio, by the way. John and Jim, San Diego Sports 760, always talking Aztecs. Download the free iHeartRadio app or listen on San Diego Sports 760. And also, if you want the audio-only edition of this show because you're in your car or you're going for a jog or you're doing odds and ends around the house and you're not trying to watch it on YouTube but you just want the audio, click the link down below. There's a link down below for the podcast edition of the wrap-up show. So we have that for you as well. My name's John Schaefer. This has been the wrap-up show presented by Higher Impact Financial. Thanks, guys. Enjoy.